everyone knows that testnet 11 will bump caspa from one block per second to 10. What a lot of people don't realize is the equation known as TPS or transactions per second. Block speed is a very important variable in this equation, but so is block size. And when we start to get into this, we're going to cover terms like sharding, Put this all into layman's terms, which will give everybody a deeper understanding for how cryptocurrency works and therefore why Caspa is such a shining gem. You're watching Jesse and AI, the channel that's turned $12,500 into just under a quarter million dollars in 200 days. Using artificial intelligence and technical analysis, we found Tia, at $5, it's this week's hottest runner, almost touching $20. We gave the Caspa 48 hour heads up right before the God Candle. Only channel on YouTube to catch this with our special TA structure. And we also made the Golden X directly on the Caspa chart showing exactly where Caspa was gonna turn around and pivot start bouncing to the upside. In hindsight, if we had moved it 48 hours to the left, it would have been a direct bullseye. And obviously if the news is coming out on the 10th, then the bounce would have happened on the 8th or 9th. The reason we haven't given any leverage trade callouts on Caspa recently is because of this massive mainstream media news. After two years of experience day trading, when you see a very public news event around the markets, these are the kind of things that you want to ultimately avoid. News that you want to look for is an example like May 11th. The entire United States government was cutting off all the COVID-19 relief funding to these huge Wall Street companies. Now, meanwhile, on YouTube, if you go back to April and May, all of the content creators, all your favorites are saying it's the new altcoin season, huge bull run. We were actually getting ready to short directly on May 11, and that slight change, just one different call out can completely change your entire cycle. As the rest of YouTube content creators took a loss there, we tripled our bag and then rolled it into cold storage on Caspa. A lot of content creators are into fancy editing or they're really smooth talking car salesmen, but everything they're talking about, while it's extremely interesting, has absolutely nothing to do with money making. Two significant things that we're always keeping an eye out for is in increase in hash rate, which we saw this summer, which was one of the number one driving fundamental reasons why we invested into Caspa, because these ASIC machines were turning on. And there was actually a massive narrative going around that the ASICs were going to crash Caspa. That's so wrong, it's comical. And these guys have like 50,000, 100,000 subscribers to get a plaque from YouTube. And they don't even know what they're doing. Another narrative that you really want to watch out for that can make a ton of money is when a cryptocurrency is in a test net and it's moving to a main net. Now, Caspa is in what is known as a pre-alpha main net, which is a variable of a test net. Once it goes to 10 blocks per second, that's going to be main net Caspa. That's when it's going to get listing on Binance. Everybody is saying it's about to get listed on Binance. They don't realize how big of a moneymaker getting into projects is when they're on testnet yet, although they have stumbled into Caspa. So my hat's off to them. Of course, once real Caspa rolls out and we get the 10 block per second upgrade, now the ASICs can actually improve and the hash rate will astronomically jump to the upside, which is one of our theories on what's going to happen in the 2025 bull market. There'll be a release of new, more powerful, supercharged ASICs possibly running on like a 32 BPS or even the fabled 100 BPS. And that can absolutely send Caspa skyrocketing. It's very difficult to get a forward price prediction right now because Caspa's not even on mainnet. So we can use all of our technical analysis tricks and get an assumption. But in my opinion, all of this data is completely not valid because the coin isn't even on mainnet yet. This brings us into block size. Let's start at the beginning with Big Papa Bitcoin. The block size there is one megabyte. With Solana, 
it's a hundred and twenty eight megabytes with these like Bitcoin gold, Bitcoin cash. What they were trying to do was actually make bigger blocks. They're using like eight megabyte blocks. So the equation of TPS will be higher, not because it's necessarily faster, but the thing they're trying to increase massively is the block size. Now, Ethereum came up with a whole new concept, unlimited block size. And Caspa also has unlimited block size. Now, with Ethereum, what can hold you back on these huge blocks trying to pump out is the gas fees. The gas fees will just get too high and it gets out of control. This is where sharding comes into effect. So while like one big block is coming out of the Ethereum chain, they wanna do some smaller, maybe just cash transactions. They just make a whole nother smaller ripple. And when you kind of look at the visual here, you got like one chain here and another here for the shard, you're starting to get the first branches of what a block DAG looks like. Now, getting into more complex theories of this, a lot of times with your Bitcoin, your Bitcoin cash, you get orphan blocks. Like imagine in court, there's two stenographers keeping track of everything, recording everything down. Well, you just wasted a bunch of energy because you're only gonna take one of these stenographer files. And these are called orphan blocks. And this happens a lot, it's just like a waste of energy. There's too many stenographers recording everything. And so when you get into the block DAG, there's reducing the orphan blocks out, which makes it way more energy efficient. Because not only are you wasting time, which is money with these orphan blocks, you're also just wasting resources. You're just burning electricity. So it's far more efficient to mine Caspa. Putting Caspa's transactions per second face to face with Solana's transactions per second, we can see how strong Caspa is against this proof of stake leader in the industry in transactions per second. Remember, Caspa's a proof of work, which gives it a far more decentralized, better consensus thesis. Solana does 2.5 blocks per second. Once Caspa gets to the 10 BPS, the real Caspa mainnet, we're talking about 10 blocks per second. Solana can do 4,000 transactions per second. Caspa can do 3,000 transactions per second once it's at 10 BPS. Now forward projecting as new hardware comes out, Solana might be able to increase their TPS up to an astounding 65,000, but so can Caspa. As you release the 32 BPS and the fabled 100 BPS, Caspa is right there in the race with Solana, but these are two completely different styles of cryptocurrency, showing how Satoshi's final vision is starting to come true with Caspa. We have another video which is proving Jonathan Saplinski, the founder of Caspa, is the man himself who started Bitcoin. You guys can check that out after. I'll put a link right here. Thanks for checking out this video. We'll catch you on the next one.